word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire give us this day our daily bread one more time again give us this day our daily bread this day <laughs> all right Jesus is the one talking here. Amen. The greatest advantage of the Bible is that it has captured the opinions of God concerning the affairs of men. If you want to know what God is thinking about your life and how you should live, check the Bible. Glory be to God. There are many of us who are deceived or misled because of our unwillingness to read the Bible. But when you want to know what God is truly thinking is in the Bible. So, when I want my faith to be strengthened in God, I read the Bible because it has an advantage. It shows me what, how God sees. So the Bible has captured the opinions of God concerning the affairs of men. And don't forget that we as Christians are called to live by the leading of the Holy Spirit and not the leading of men. Are you following me here? So when we read the Bible and we see something, we should understand it is beyond just being a book. The book has captured something that it needs to focus on so on this day jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray and he said when you want to pray say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our deliverance this 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 there's a great emphasis there give us this day our daily prayer now this scripture is a revelation of God's intention towards man on a daily basis. This scripture makes me understand that in, in the economy of the spirit, God deals with man on a daily basis. Not give us this day our monthly bread, our daily bread. Which means, if you just pray once in a while, you cannot work with God. Give us this day. So, there is something that is reserved and prepared for you every day. So it takes a man who has this understanding to have access to this thing every day. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Which day? Lift your hands and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, today, open my heart to know your word. Pray that prayer again from your heart. Ask you, what has God given you today? It is your knowledge of the promises of God that sustains your expectation and trust in God. You cannot have trust in a God you don't know what he has said or what he has planned for you. When you hear Jesus says, give us this day our daily bread, he was teaching the disciples that every day there is something God has prepared for you. But until you actually place a demand for it, you will not have it. Give us this day our daily bread. So you don't sit back and expect it to come. You have to place a demand. There is something prepared. So when I read this, what I understand, the Lord was trying to make them understand that every day some, God keeps something for you. Imagine your life that every day you receive something from God. My God, this would be a wonderful life where every day you grow in blessing, you grow in glory, you grow in favor, you grow in wisdom, you grow in knowledge. That's God's plan for your life. Have you ever known that? You know, some of us think that our blessings should come once in a month. God is big enough to bless you every day. Is it true? And God wants to do it every day. Because the Lord will not ask us to pray a prayer that has no answer. Give us this day our daily bread. Not our yearly bread. What's the meaning of daily? Something which is given every day. Oh, lift your hands and say, Lord. I receive my daily bread. One more time again. 
So, in the economy of God, provision has been made to sustain men by blessings on a daily basis. Every day you wake up, expect something from God. Because God has prepared something for you. You wake up today and you look at your life. Obviously, most of them, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you begin to check about is your problem. No, don't think about your problem. Think about what God wants to do for you that day. You need this consciousness to be able to walk. There are many of us here that we, we have spent, this is the sixth month of the seventh month of the year, but we have not even used one tenth of what God prepared for us because we are wasting our days with what? With worrying. I will show you what, what makes people not to enjoy what is kept for them in a day. It's through the power of worry. So, we have to understand and have this knowledge that God has prepared something for us. And every day, he desires to give it to us. Give us this day our daily bread. So, number one, the first thing I want you to know is this. Our walk with God is on a daily basis. That's number one. So, if you just come to church on Sunday, you are not even a Christian. You are a man who goes to church. Until your work with God comes on a daily basis, it means you have not begun Christianity. Christianity is not about coming to church. We come to church just to learn how the ways of God. But much more is on a daily, which means there are some things which are expected of us to be done every day by reason of what? Of God. Give us this day. Which means you have to pray that prayer also daily. Do you understand me? So, many of us therefore... The mistake we make is that we have confined our life and restricted our life to um, um, monthly events, weekly events. The whole week you don't do anything. On Sunday you rush and come to church and sit down. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, what are you doing? We don't know. Sunday you come back. No. You have to understand. Number one, our work with God is on a daily basis. He says, an Enoch walked with God. This is, give me Genesis chapter 5, verse 23. Yeah, let's go to 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So we are called to walk with God on a daily basis. This shows you how important it is. Now, many of us, because we are so focused on things of tomorrow, we will miss the blessings of today. So number one, we are called to walk with God on a daily basis. Number two, we are called to focus on what God is doing today. Show me Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about his own things. Sufficient for the day is his own trouble. Are we seeing that now? Number two, we are called to focus on what God is doing today. Every time you wake up, have an understanding that every day is a gift from God. In Psalm chapter 4, I believe, since David said, I slept, this is verse 3 to 6, I've forgotten, just check it there. I slept and I woke up because you sustained me. Not because my alarm woke me up, because you, the Lord, sustained me. So from now, never forget that every time you wake up in the morning, that money you got up is a gift from God. A gift that must be treasured. The easiest way to waste the blessings of today is to be concerned and worry about the troubles of tomorrow. Jesus said, when it comes to walking with the God, focus on today, be concerned about what God wants to do today, pray for his blessings today, and when tomorrow comes, you will handle itself. Because in tomorrow, God will release a grace for your life. Are you understanding me? So, you have to learn how to be focused. Many people are being caught by worry. You see that, oh, how will I do next week? You say, focus on now. The problem for next week can come today if you are focused on God today. But if today you are focused on next week, you will miss the solution today. One of the greatest strategies the devil uses to steal the blessings of Christians is called worrying. They are worried. Worried about their life. Worry about their health. Every, they are worried. I, wor, worried about things which don't even exist. They are worried. 
I don't know. Man don't know how thing they go be. Man don't know how thing be. Man don't know how thing they go be. But man deserve God where he know how thing they go be. Leave it there. So, I, I don't know what is in tomorrow. But I know a God that does not only know tomorrow. He holds tomorrow. So, my trust is in God. Please, I beg you, refuse to be worried about tomorrow. It is a trap by Satan to steal your joy today. Are you understanding me? It steals your peace of mind. And sometimes eh, you get so worried that you get to the tomorrow you worry it and nothing has changed. Because worrying cannot do anything. Ah, man, okay, I don't know. Hi, how will we do next week? Mm -mm. There are opportunities today. Every day, God gives you opportunity. Every day, God opens the door for you. Number three. Every day, <laughs> comes with a trouble. Matthew 6 34. He says, sufficient for the day is his own trouble. Now look at this. Every day you wake up in the morning, never forget this, the devil has prepared something bad for you. But I'll show you the next point. Whatever you prepare doesn't matter because there's something else you can do and come out from it. So every day the devil prepares a trouble for your life. Something he wants to use to hurt you or to afflict you or oppress you. So remember this. That is why you must be very conscious of God because people wake up in the morning by afternoon, you hear news, something happened to them. They never woke up and thought something bad will happen to them that day. When Job woke up that morning, Job never knew that by 6 p.m. you will bury all his children. He, he could not even think, he was not even, he didn't come across his mind that on that same day you will bury children. He didn't appear in his heart. He didn't know. So that is why we pray every morning because every day comes with trouble. Prayer is therefore a strategy to handle the troubles that the devil has prepared for you during the day. That's why it's important to pray. I'll show you very soon. Number four. Every day comes with opportunities for a lifting. Bring up Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Return and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. But time and what? And chance happen to them all. So, every day as well, every day of your life don't forget this an opportunity comes so when the devil wants to hinder you from taking advantage of the opportunity today he makes you worried about the troubles of tomorrow every problem in your life has a solution never forget this no matter what you are going through there is no problem on earth without the solution in god no matter what it is even if some people had the problem and they died it does not mean god cannot solve it it may have been that they didn't know what to do to come out from it. That's why you need to know the word of God. That every day has what? An opportunity. But if you have to take advantage of this opportunity, you must not spend your whole today to be focused on tomorrow. There are many people who are living sad and sorrowful lives because they are too concerned. Too concerned about tomorrow. He says, time and chance happen to them all time and chance are you with me now time and chance can i tell you something in luke chapter 13 verse 11 he says there was a woman who had been who had been um she had she was sick for 18 years and she was actually bent over she was bent over and couldn't stand up he says one day a certain day she was at the temple and the Lord Jesus came there and prayed for her. Now, this woman did not know that day would be the end of her problem. That's why I said, there are opportunities every day. But only those who are conscious of God every day can take advantage of opportunities every day. Every day, God gives you a chance to increase. Every day of your life. Every day of your life is that some people wake up from 6 to 6, they are doing nothing. Not that they are the way. Uh, if you take advantage of what I'm saying, you will see how your life will be moving ahead. Make up your mind that from today, every day you must increase, you must grow. So, we see from scripture, therefore, that every day of our life, God gives us what? Opportunity. Oh my God, lift your hands and say, Father, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help me to grow every day. Take that prayer.
opportunities. Opportunities. You can have a job today. You can have capital today. Every day has opportunities. But you need to be sensitive to God. There are many of us, because of the cares of this world, we are too focused on, I will let, no, focus on God. When you worry, you will not see what God is showing you. Because worrying is a strategy by Satan to take your eyes off God and put it on the things you need. When a man is worried, he stops being focused about God and become focused about himself. I have not eaten. I don't have a job. I don't have, if you will stop being worried. That's what those who trust God don't worry. And those who worry don't trust God. Are you following me here? Number how many now? Five. Every day comes with a blessing from God. Matthew 6, 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Our what? Our what? Our daily bread. Daily bread. Which means not our yearly bread. Give us today what you have to give us every day. God is a great God. He does not just bless people one day per week. Some people think that they are only blessed on Sunday when we come for church. It is so for you because it is only on Sunday you worship God. If you start worshiping God every day, you will see his blessings every day. Every day of your life, God has ordained to bless you and increase you. Every day, it means the path of the just is like a light that shines brighter and bright. it means in God's plan, in God's agenda, in God's economy, man's supposed to increase on a daily basis. Stop wasting your days. There is a blessing for you. Tomorrow, today is a blessing. Tomorrow is a every day. There is a blessing. Now, but this is the issue. Only those who trust in God can take advantage of the blessings He releases on a daily basis. That's why he said, don't worry oh, about tomorrow. Focus on today. There is something God will give you now. What God gives you today has the power and capacity to handle the issues of today. There are people now, right now, they're already worried about September school fees. How go do pay my picking and school fees? Now, they're, they're eating. Hey, how go do? How go do? How go do? Oh, next thing. Ma, go borrow. Yes, you end up by borrowing. Yes, because when you worry, you start operating by the flesh and no longer by the wisdom of the spirit. You start doing things by yourself. But if you can be calm and trust in God and say, Lord, I trust in you. I know you neither sleep nor slumber. So you are making a way for me. So you are opening doors for me. You must understand that the God you serve is mighty and able. So God can, if God bless you every day, his blessings will not finish. Don't think that God will bless you. Can it? God. God can start giving you one million every day from now to one million years. You know, you will still be fine. God is not man. They call him the well that never runs dry. Have you ever heard that? The well that never runs dry. It means no matter how you, in fact, the more you fetch, the more the water increases. That is the God we serve. So, stop restricting God. Psalm 78, verse 41. He said, these guys, they limited God by their own belief. God can heal you any day. God can increase you any day. It's your faith that gives you ability to take advantage and experience the blessings of a day. Your faith in God. Where you understand that the God that said is not a Sunday God. So you must not come today and wear your nature and come and sit down. Father, Lord, I'm in your presence. Let it rain. Where were you yesterday? You were in whose presence yesterday? I have come again. And God answer you. Where did you go before? Where did you go before? Now who say where you come up now? Oh my child. Then you reply. I have come again. <laughs> he anoints my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me and I shall dwell where? Now does it mean you take his bed and come and stay in church? The house of the Lord is symbolic of the presence of the Lord. I will live a life every day that glorifies God. 
don't only be a Sunday service Christian. As you live now like this, your Bible, you keep it. Sunday, Saturday evening. What's on my Bible day? We speak in them. I'm going to lose my Bible. Tea, speak in them. I'm going to find my Bible for the house. Find my Bible. Find my Bible. <laughs> because you don't know where you kept it. Because the last day you came to church, you, you, you went and sat outside and left it. You left it outside though. And the Bible stayed there to show that your whole house, nobody is reading the Bible. Your Bible stayed there from Saturday, Sunday to this. What's on my Bible day? Tomorrow, I said, What's on my Bible day? Because the Bible is only half used. Because the Bible is a handbag to come on Sunday and come now. I'm preaching, look at me, you smile, you shake your head. It's true, it's true, it's true. <laughs> he can bless you every day. So walk with him every day. So every day there are blessings in store. I have made up my mind, my God, that what I missed yesterday, I will not miss today. So I take advantage of today and enter the blessings of God. Glory be to God. The mercy of God is new every day. Show me Lamentations 3 verse 22. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. 23. They are new every. Great is your faithfulness. They are new everywhere. And great is your what? Your faithfulness. They are new every. Great is your. Thank you. So, when you wake up in the morning. What has God prepared for you? I will show you something very soon. You know, the mercy of God then is very powerful. The reason why God is good to man is not because man is good to God. It's because God is a merciful God. God has tied his blessings and grace to his mercy so that even when man is unfaithful, God will still bless him. God knows that because you are a man, you keep making mistakes. So God says, I'm going to attach. That is why even the day you forgot to pray, God did not forget to protect you. Even when you were too busy or too tired, God says, I am merciful God, so I will bless you. Now, this is it. Every Christian that wants, any Christian that wants to walk in the blessings of God must understand the mystery of the mercy of God. There is no prayer point greater every morning than saying, Father, thank you for your mercy. If you begin the day without receiving the mercy of God, is a mistake. Thank you for your mercy. Never wake up in the morning and say, Lord, today, give me my daily bread. Start with, Father, thank you for your mercy. When you receive mercy, you will obtain daily bread. Thank you for your mercy. So, God is merciful. Now, listen to me. It is this mercy of God that brings a man and restores him to the place he lost because of sin or satanic manipulation. In other words, God planned to give you something yesterday and you made a mistake. When today comes, God refreshes everything and brings you back into a blessing because he is merciful. Do you understand the meaning of mercy? Leave your hands and say, Lord, let your mercy speak for me. Are you understanding mercy now? Now, this is what they call the mercy of God. It is, that, it is that grace that brings you back into the place God wants you to be. No, when you are going astray, it brings you back on track. I tell you the truth, child of God. Whatever we are in God's kingdom, in God's house, is His mercy. That is why I always say this. No Christian is lucky. We are simply favored. Never say, I am lucky. We are not lucky, we are favored. Lucky that we are not lucky. Whatever does not, any evil that is planned for you, if it doesn't happen, it is the mercy of God that rescued you. Now, the more you acknowledge God's mercy, the more you enjoy God's grace. If you don't acknowledge mercy, you don't receive grace. It is important every day. Say, Father, thank you for your mercy. When you say that, you are saying, Lord, whatever will happen to me today will be determined by you, not by my strength. Thank you for your mercy. Why will God give his mercy every morning if he's not willing to do something every morning? So he says, my mercy is new every morning. Are you understanding me? Number seven. Is it number seven, right? We have the responsibility to command our day. Show me Job 38 verse 12. Have you commanded the morning since your days began? And cause the dawn to know its place. Have you commanded the morning? Now let me speak to you. This way I will give you some things that we can pray. 
give us this day our daily bread. Good. God has granted the responsibility to command our days to the saints. Which means God may plan good for you today. But because you woke up and didn't know what to do, you saw evil that day. Because I told you, I said, every day come with trouble. So in as much as God has a plan, the devil also has a plan. Are you understanding me? But now, wisdom will be to know what to do on a daily basis to enjoy what God has prepared for you. Ask somebody, have you commanded your day? Ask somebody else, have you commanded your day? Now, I'm going to show you some things that you must do daily. Must. Somebody must. These things are things which you do and you enter into the economy of the spirit. So, though we preach, God has a blessing for you today. Amen. If you do nothing, you will see nothing. No? Are you following me? If you just wake up in the morning and say, Ah, today is my day. The day of joy. Sing, amen, amen. Rejoice, glory. As you go, a poverty will jam you on the road and, and slap you. There are things to be done. He said, have you commanded your money? You have children, learn how to command the day. My child cannot have an accident. It all begins in the morning. Have you? So, they are laws to command the day. Number one, every morning, you must receive the mercy of God. That's the first thing you do. You must do what? Receive the mercy of God. This is how you command the morning. The day. When you fail to receive mercy in the, in the morning, you, you, you deny yourself opportunity to access grace in the afternoon. Give me Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace uh -huh, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us do what? Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. He says, when we obtain mercy, we will find grace to help in times of need. So, a man who has not obtained mercy in the morning will not find grace to help in times of need in the afternoon. That is why when you wake up in the morning, the first thing to do is not to check your phone and see who sent you a message. The first thing to do is to receive the mercy of God. Your phone should be the last thing you check in the morning. Every morning as you wake up, first thing you kneel down. Father, thank you for today. You are acknowledging. I tell you in Psalms 4, I don't know if it's verse 3 or verse 6. David said, I slept and I woke up for you, sustained me. So when you wake up, the first thing you do is to acknowledge the grace that sustained you. Because grace is multiplied by the acknowledgement of the God you serve. Lord, thank you for today. The next thing is, Lord, I receive mercy. Are you following me, child of God? I'm sure you have to command your day. See the mercy of God. Show me Psalms 108, verse 1 to 2. Oh God, mm -hmm. awake, lute and harp. I will awaken. I will do what? How do you wake up the morning? By praise. He says, I will awake the morning with song. Bring it up again and show us verse 3. Give me that verse again. Awake, lute and have these musical instruments. I will, I will praise you. I will awaken the dawn. Verse 3. verse 3. I will praise you, O Lord. So you see, every morning when you receive mercy, spend time to praise God. Are you with me here? This is what you do to command your day. Amen. Alright, then what do you do every evening? Every evening, you must declare the faithfulness of God. Tell somebody, declare the faithfulness of God. Tell somebody else, declare the faithfulness of God. Psalms 3 verse 2. He says, in the evening, I shall declare your faithfulness. Now, this is very important now. He says, every evening, I will declare what? I will declare what? Your faithfulness. This is something that many of us need to learn to do in church. That 
before you sleep in the night what you need to do is to declare the faithfulness of God because okay that's it to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every are you seeing that it is an error to sleep without saying father thank you for today you have been faithful to me <laughs> you are too faithful to fail me You are too faithful to disappoint me. Shada baga nasigo baga da mandeka. And I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. Ah, this day there were many arrows of the devil, but I moved through it all. Your faithfulness preserved me lord in the evening your husband comes back to the house your children come back thank you lord for your faithfulness this is the highest way to secure the grace of daily preservation provision and protection you must thank before you sleep you must not pray long prayer father thank you for your faithfulness i tell you the truth people of god some people leave their house and they never come back it's not because they are terrible sinners. So if you want to stay in God's economy of preservation, don't play with it. Father, thank you. You may keep living your life without praying and taking this for granted. One day something may happen, you may cry. So don't take it for granted. He says in the morning, I will declare your mercy. In the evening, I will declare your faithfulness. You have been faithful to my life faithful to my business thank you jesus you have helped me and don't forget that in the economy of the kingdom of god your day begins in the evening not in the morning he says and god made the first day and it was and god created the heavens and the earth and it was evening and morning that was the first day so when you start by declaring god's faithfulness there are some demons that cannot come oppress you in the dream when demons want to manipulate what happens to you in the day they comes and corrupt what happens in the night that's why demons come in the dream they come with food they come to sleep with you all these attacks they nothing can happen to you in a dream and you die a dream but that dream is a manipulation of something to happen in the daytime so you must arrest it father thank you for your faithfulness you are faithful to me so every day before you sleep commanding your day in days that in the morning what do you do in the morning in the afternoon what do you do you praise in the evening you declare his faithfulness. Do you understand me? Please don't forget what I'm teaching you. It's very important. Are you hearing? Let me show you some things which you have to do daily now. So, so you now said, give us this day our daily bread. Amen. I'll give you three things that you must do every day for you to enjoy God's to receive daily bread every day if you don't do these things you may not have them so god has planned for you but there's something you must do to receive them number one you must pray every day show me psalms 55 and 17 evening and morning and at noon i will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice so david prays how many times a day three times so scripture re recommends we have been pres the prescription of God for prayers three times a day it means you are you are enforced you are called you are you are held by God that every day at least three times you should pray in the morning lift your voice in the afternoon pray in the evening pray in the morning what do you pray for for mercy in the afternoon you pray for grace and favor in the evening you pray for his faithfulness make it a habit don't pray one time in one week that's not a life you are a child of god when you do this every day you will enjoy god every day pray every day even if it's 10 minutes pray start praying when you start praying the prayer will increase to one day one hour but start even if it's five minutes just pray every day set aside time for prayer even if it's just five minutes pray it's important you pray let prayer become a daily habit can i tell you something can you imagine what will happen to you if you wake up in the morning and you don't brush your teeth? 
So you don't brush your teeth because you like it. It's because it is a necessity of life. Do you understand me? Now, if, brush, if not brushing your teeth has an impact on you, what about prayer? But since brushing your teeth is physical and prayer is spiritual, you don't see it. It is important every day you pray. David said three times a day I will pray. Number two, you must praise God every day. Please take note of everything I'm saying. So I know, let me take meditate every day. Praise will be the last. You must meditate on the word of God every day. Show me Psalms 1 verse 1 to 3. You must meditate on the word of God every day. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the law. In his law, he meditates day. He meditates when? Child of God. One of the ways to waste your day is to spend an entire day without meditating on the word of God. You should have Christian messages in your phone, in your iPad, in your laptop and on your tv you have gospel channels every day set don't only hear the messages set aside time to read the bible for man shall not live by bread alone but by every that does what come up from the mouth of god so every day set aside time to read the bible is important the pastor will not come and read the bible for you read it yourself it is your life so you can grow amen because when you read Bible every day, you grow daily. Do you understand me? And number three, you must praise God every day. Show me Psalms 119 verse 64. But seven times a day, I praise you. How many times a day? Kai. Some people praise God one time a week. This man praised God. Now, this is the man who said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. That you are quoting it. The Lord my shepherd shall not lack. Lord my shepherd shall not lack. I am praying one time in one week. Lord my shepherd shall not lack. Lord my shepherd shall not lack. If David see you, he will beat you. Because the man who wrote this thing, he prays, he praises God seven times. But you, even to dance on Sunday, if it's like they have to hit the drum very strong. Say, well, you know, but no matter how it's just your head that is shaking. The church, they dance eh? <laughs> Then when you see what they be a small beginning, so ah, Jesus said, Come on to me, children. They are not adults in the house of God. We are children of God. How can you dance and you don't sweat? In your room, praise God. Let worship become a lifestyle. Some of us, during the week, we are dancing, shake your bum bum, shake your bum bum, shake your bum bum. On Sunday now, you are the pillar that Oh la la! This is how you sing and you are crying. Oh my God, Lord! Tuesday, Angelina, oh Angelina, my baby, oh Angelina, Angelina, Angeli, Angeli, Angelina, oh. <laughs> when I Sunday come back again, oh Lord, my God, when I'm yours, oh, I love this God. <laughs> come on for the. One of the proof that a man loves God is that he abides in the place of worship. Worship God now. So every day you praise God. Your own can go too. But praise God. Set your system of praise. Have a time where you worship God every day. Every day you must pray. You must do what? Meditate and you must do what? Any day you spend without doing any of these things is a wasted day. Will you rise on your feet?